All right, so the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to work with our Beats Glitch track. Now this track we're using with the APC40 crossfader so we can cut over quickly to create fill style effects. So rather than just using the randomized clips here, I'm also going to take things to the next level using a custom audio effects rack that I built. I'm not going to go into detail about how I built this because I have another YouTube video that I've already created. If you want to check this one out all step by step how I created this smart knob, then check out and look on YouTube for Vesper's smart knob tutorial and you'll see exactly how I built this. Now what this is, is this is an audio effects rack with a variety of different chains and I'm using the chain selector to be able to morph through using crossfading different types of effects on our beat. So if we play our beat, you'll be able to hear each one of these effects. So the first thing we have to do is make sure our crossfader is over far to the right so we can hear this. And then we're going to press play and we're going to move through so you can hear the sounds. So a whole bunch of different types of effects and I'm actually going to MIDI map this to a single knob on the APC40. That's the beautiful thing about the chain selector morphing through these effects is if I click here, I can use the chain selector to MIDI map to a knob on my APC40. So now we can simply twist the knob on the APC40 and move through these different types of effects. Now I can show you how we can use the crossfader and this knob to create glitch style fills using the two beat loops. Okay, so between using the crossfader and a smart knob, all of a sudden we've got a really great uh, controllerism style beat juggling template set up. Now we're going to move over into using some of the APC40's other buttons for uh, launching dummy MIDI clips that will control glitch effects that will add another layer of live playability to our template. So what we've got in here is we've got two MIDI tracks. And these MIDI tracks are controlling two instances of Sugar Bytes Artillery, which are on my master bus. Sugar Bytes Artillery is an amazing live plugin that I use in every single one of my live performance templates. And it's a live glitch plugin. And what it does is it allows you to effectively play with piano key roll different types of effects in a momentary style. So you can press down a key, the effect will activate and you let up on the key, the effect will release. So it's an amazing way to set things up in the live environment. I really enjoy this. And I'm using two instances here because I have a couple of different custom patches that I've created. Now, normally what I would do with artillery is I would use a piano MIDI keyboard to be able to play the different keys. In this case, however, I'm going to be replicating that same effect using MIDI clips from the APC40. So these two MIDI tracks right here, what these contain are MIDI clips. And if we go to the I.O. settings of the MIDI track, you'll see that the MIDI out is sent over to my master track and specifically it's selecting artillery. So what this means is the MIDI information contained in this clip is going to be programming and controlling Sugar Bites artillery. Same thing with this one, only it's controlling the other instance of artillery. That's why I have two tracks here. Now each one of these clips is just simply playing a piano note. But because there's no instrument on this track, it's not making a sound. This is why it's called a dummy MIDI clip. It's dumb information not actually controlling a device that's on this. It's sending it out to another device within Live. So one very important thing about these MIDI clips is their settings. So when we're taking a look at these, you have to make sure that the setting, the launch mode, is set to gate. And what this means is that when I press down on a button on the APC40, the clip will play. And when I let up on the button, it'll stop playing immediately because I don't want any delay on my effects. If I left this in one of the regular launch modes, it would play the full amount of the MIDI clip, which may apply the effect for longer than I desire. Next, it's very important to have none for quantization because I don't want to have any delay between when I press the button and when the effect applies, and I want to be able to do it in real time. So quantization to zero for all the clips. And then simply all I've done here is I have the 
MIDI note information corresponding to the note in artillery. So if we click over to artillery here, we can see that the first MIDI note will be applying to this note on the piano roll. So if we play our template just using the beat loop, I'll show you what artillery is doing. And in artillery, I have uh, these ones are all different types of slicing presets for a beat repeater. And these are different types of effects like filters and flangers and delays, a tonal looper, a turntable stop style effect, and a reverser. So I'll just show you uh, on the APC40 uh, what these guys are doing right here. So those allow me to have an incredible amount of control directly from the APC-40 using one single device. There's no Max for Live that's being used here. Um, the only third-party effect I'm using is Sugar Bites Artillery, and uh, in a lot of cases actually um, some of the effects from Sugar Bites Artillery can be recreated using stock effects in Live, such as the Beat Repeat plugin. I just like Sugar Bites Artillery because it has um, uh, a wide range of effects built into one single plugin, which I find useful. The last thing I have in my live performance template is a fairly complex audio effects rack that I designed. Uh, I've shown how I created this one uh, in one of my other YouTube videos as well. And this is using the macros in the audio effects rack. And these are all designed to be mapped out to eight knobs on the APC-40. So on this audio effects rack, you can see I have a low pass filter, I have a high pass filter, a bit crusher, so a redux plugin in live, uh, delay, which is a very short delay using unsynced delay time, so it gives it a metal sound. A reverb, a frequency shifter, and a grain delay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter MIDI mapping mode, and you can see I've mapped these all out to the knobs on the APC-40. So on my APC-40, I'm using these guys to control the knobs on the macros here. And when we press one of our drum loops playing, for example, or say let's time let's use the sax loop. I'll just show you what this sounds like and its audio sculpting capabilities in a in a live set template. <laughs> So now we have an incredible amount of control. We have beat repeaters and different types of effects available directly from dummy MIDI clips on the APC-40. We have four different types of sounds, two for the drum loops, and we have the sax, the iwi, and the vocal loop all lined up in our set. We can stutter and beat repeat any one of these using the follow actions and buttons on the APC-40. And we also have the audio effects rack and the ability to cut over using the crossfader to make glitch style fills using the smart effects knob that I'd created in the other tutorial. So very, um, you know, it might seem complicated, but once you've set up these racks and once you've created this template, it's actually very simple to use. And so I, that's why I really wanted to demystify this because it's actually not hard if you just know the features of live and you know how to use racks and MIDI mapping and things like that. It's really not very hard to set up these quite impressive looking sets. And although I've seen quite a few of these uh, very impressive looking videos on YouTube, I've never really seen anybody go through and take the time to explain behind the scenes, you know, under the hood, how you might want to set this up. So I hope you guys got something out of this video. Uh, my name is Vespers. I'm a Ableton Live Certified Trainer, and I do one-on-one -on -one teaching online as well as develop video-based educational products for users of Live. Um, I really love the program. I use it every day in the studio and in my live performances, and um, I think one of the things I find the most fun to do is to, is to geek out and talk about it with other people, so I really enjoy teaching and uh, invite you to uh, get in touch if you feel like you could use some help. Otherwise, I uh, really hope you enjoyed the video and stay tuned, subscribe, and uh, keep in touch for the next one. Cheers.